If you've watched The Wolf of Wall Street, you may have gotten the impression that on Wall Street you throw outrageous parties filled with lots of drugs, aggressive chants, and throwing midgets around, but unfortunately, maybe, I guess, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but I'm here to basically tell you that that is not the case. Having worked in banking for a few years at JP Morgan, I can tell you that first of all, The Wolf of Wall Street pretty much has nothing to do with corporate investment banking, and second of all, the office environment is pretty tame. The only thing that goes a little bit crazy is the end of the year holiday party where people just get roasted at the holiday roast but that's pretty much it so today i'm gonna tell you exactly what investment banking is and go through everything that you need to know as a beginner looking to enter into the industry jumping into today's agenda i'll first be going over the firm rankings i'll then go over what you do the hours and lifestyle hierarchy and compensation and lastly, some pros and cons to help you figure out if banking is for you. By the way, before getting the video started, if you're interested in recruiting for investment banking, I have a bunch of resources I made myself at rareliquidcareers.com, which you can find down in the description below. And also wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Jackfruit. All right, now first up, let's get you familiar with the different banks and discuss the firm hierarchy. First thing you need to know are the four different categories for investment banks, which are bulge bracket banks, elite boutiques, middle market banks, and regular boutique banks. And I'll explain each as I go through the rankings. Starting with the top firms, in tier 1A, you have the top three bulge bracket banks, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and JP Morgan. And most bankers would probably rank them in that order as well. These three banks work on the largest deals, ranging from $100 million to $200 billion, and they also have the largest worldwide presence. Then in tier 1B are the elite boutique banks like Evercore, Catalyst, Centerview, and Perella. And these banks provide just as good experiences, pay considerably more actually, and sometimes are chosen over GS, MS, and JPM, but they are just not as well known outside the finance world. In tier two, we have the remaining bulge bracket banks and all these firms are still really solid, but you aren't usually working on the top deals and are competing for deals rather than having the deals all come to you. Below that are middle market banks and these banks still offer competitive pay, but usually a bit less than bulge brackets and your average deal size is just a lot smaller ranging from tens of millions of dollars to about $10 billion max. Then below that are smaller boutique banks that will really vary in terms of experience based on the seniors at the firm and the deals they bring in. And often these banks are good stepping stones to work at larger banks. With so many investment banks, one of the hardest parts about investment banking recruiting is actually just keeping track of all the different people you reach out to and all the firms you're recruiting for. And I actually have a great solution for you if you're recruiting for investment banking or actually any other job. Jackfruit is a recruiting focused platform that allows you to keep track of all your progress throughout your recruiting journey. And let me highlight some of the key aspects of the platform. First off, if you go to applications, you can see that you can keep track of all the different companies and positions you apply for. And then if you go into contacts, you reach out to so many people when you're networking. And so it's just nice to have a platform that allows you to easily keep track of all the people you reach out to. And then what I think is actually the coolest is actually the Jackfruit plugin, which allows you to just add applications on sites like LinkedIn, and it automatically seamlessly adds it to your application feed, as you can see here. And so as, after clicking application, it takes a few seconds and then it just pops up here. And so, yeah, it's really cool. If you like what you saw and you're interested in checking Jackfruit out, I'll leave a link to them down in my description below. So feel free to check them out if you're interested. All right, now next up, let's discuss what you do as a banker. At the end end of the day, bankers really help clients with two main things. First is M&A, which is the buying and selling of companies. And second is the raising of funds, either through debt or equity offerings. In general, banks provide financial advice for things like how much a company should be bought or sold for, how much debt a company can take on, or at what valuation a company should IPO. The bank guides the client throughout these transactions and takes a cut, just as a realtor would when selling a home. As a more junior banker, you typically work on four things, which include financial models in Excel, creating pitch books for meetings on PowerPoint, conducting research by looking into filings and industry reports, and either coordinating or participating in meetings. Your experience also depends on whether you join a coverage group where you work on deals only in one specific industry like tech, healthcare, or consumer, versus if you join a product group like the M&A or equity capital markets group where you're only working on M&A or equity deals. Of course, there's a lot more to it and I kept it pretty brief because I go into what a week in the life of a banker is like in this video right here. So feel free to check that out if you wanna learn more. Next up, let's go into the hours and lifestyle. 
I think most people know by now that it's pretty common for analysts to put in 70 to 100 hours a week, which means you're typically working from 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. until past midnight on most days and working anywhere from 0 to 20 hours on weekends. As time goes on, your hours become much more manageable. And so roughly speaking, I'd say associates work anywhere from 60 to 90 hours, VPs work 50 to 80 hours, and directors work 40 to 60 hours per week. Now you may be wondering, why do bankers work so much, especially at the junior level? And can't banks just hire a few more people, a few more analysts and associates in order to spread out the work and make the working hours a bit more reasonable? To that, I would say you are a very reasonable person, but the truth is it's a little bit complicated and let me try to explain why bankers work such long hours with an analogy. Imagine you're in high school or college and you're working on an essay for an English class and you're assigned a 200 page book to read and you have to write a 10 page essay within the next week. So then obviously you don't have that much time. You just furiously start reading and then get all the reading done in the next few days and then start writing on your essay. But then on the third day of the week, the professor all of a sudden says, hey, there's an updated book that's now 250 pages. Read this instead. So that sounds unreasonable, but you can't really do anything about it because the professor really calls the shots. And so you read the 250 page book and you're writing the essay and for the essay, you can't really split up an essay really well, right? Because you're gonna lose a lot of cohesion. And so it's not like you can say, hey, you read the first 75 pages of this of the book and then I'll read the remaining 175 and then you write the intro and the first two body paragraphs, I'll work on the remaining body paragraphs and the conclusion. You know, you can't really split up an essay in that way. And so this is basically my analogy for investment banking as well. When you're working in banking, first, you're assigned huge assignments to do in short periods of time because clients are paying a lot of money and deals are very time sensitive. Then you're often dealing with data, information and relentless client requests and changes that are constantly changing the work you need to get done. And lastly, if you're the analyst running a model with 20 tabs and hundreds of lines in Excel, you can't really split up the model with another analyst. Now, with that said, there is some work that can be split up. So for example, one analyst could work on the discounted cash flow analysis, while another could work on trading and transaction comps. And there's not that much overlap between those two. And there's another analyst that could be working on the industry pages for the PowerPoint. But basically, usually what happens is that deal teams are really, really small and lean in order to just maintain that cohesion and have one or two max analysts that really just know everything that's going on for a deal because so much can be changing. It just takes a lot of time and effort to keep a lot of people up to speed all the time and have them working on difficult things, different things, and then bringing them all together. And so that's basically why bankers, especially at the junior level, work such long hours. All right, now moving on, let's go into the investment banking hierarchy and everyone's favorite part, compensation. First, starting off with the hierarchy, titles are relatively standard across most banks and go from analyst to associate to vice president to director to managing director. From analyst to vice president, it often takes two to three years to get promoted at each level. And then from vice president to managing director, it can take anywhere from three to five years, depending on the firm and your individual performance. Now focusing on compensation, here is a snapshot which you can see for the first three years at each level. And as you can see, your bonus varies widely and depends on performance. And let me provide some commentary for each level. Analyst pay saw a pretty huge increase over the past one to two years from a base salary of around 85K to 110K for first years, and even more for second and third year analysts. And you're paid even more at elite boutique banks who usually only have two year analyst programs. Associates also saw a jump from a 150K base salary to 175K for first years. And some of your compensation and bonus is paid in stock if you work for a public bulge bracket bank. But regardless, compensation jumps pretty significantly from the analyst level, as you can see here. From the VP level onward, compensation is a bit more of an estimate because the data isn't widely available. But I did ask some of my friends and you can expect total comp at this level to easily cross half a million and up to a bit more than $1 million at elite boutique banks. Last are directors, which is where you likely start crossing the $1 million compensation range across most banks. And as you can see, your compensation really accelerates the more senior you get at a bank. If all of this compensation talk has got you interested in a career in investment banking, I used to be the JP Morgan UC Berkeley recruiting captain for a few years, and I compiled all of my best tips in an investment banking recruiting guide, which you can find at rareliquidcareers.com.
In the guide, I provide a really detailed industry overview, go over some of my best networking tips, and also provide real behavioral and technical questions that were asked in interviews across multiple banks and answers so you know how to answer those questions. And I also at rareliquidcareers.com have a resume bank and template that you can also purchase and also resume and cover letter guide if you're interested in those as well. So feel free to check out any of those resources and I'll leave a link down in my description below. Next up, let's chat about the pros and cons of investment banking. Starting off with the pros, the first is something that my managing director once told me and I kind of never forgot which is that whenever a company comes to an investment bank, they usually come in the most important moments of that company's history. Whenever a company wants to buy another company, sell itself, or go IPO, these are huge milestones for any company. And so what this entails is top-level management and C-suite executives who are really kind of running an industry. And you, as someone who has just come out of college as an analyst, get a lot of really great exposure to these minds. And so what this also entails is a lot of tight deadlines, kind of some high pressure, but you know, as someone who, who's coming out of college, it's really great to be put in that kind of situation where you're just learning so much personally and professionally. The second pro is that you learn how to build financial models, which is a highly coveted skill. And there's really no other kind of training that provides how to build financial models as investment banking does. And so this leads to really, really great exit opportunities, especially if you're interested in finance. When it comes to exit opportunities, there's pretty much nothing in the business world that's kind of better than investment banking. You can join a private equity firm, a hedge fund, an industry job like in the tech field or something like that. Or you can do something completely different like what I'm doing with uh, making YouTube videos. The third and last pro is kind of obvious, but it's the compensation. And it's actually meaningfully also increased over the past one to two years, as I explained previously in the video. And it's not just about compensation in your investment banking time, but also afterwards, because you'll always have that kind of frame of reference that you can tell other companies, hey, I used to make this much. And so when you're leaving banking, you'll probably make more than that if you join the buy side, or if you join some kind of industry job and you have a better work-life balance, you won't get paid as much, but probably a bit more than you would joining from any other type of job beforehand. Moving on to the cons, the first and most obvious is the lifestyle because you're just expected to work 70 to 100 hours a week at the junior banker level. And so that's a ton of time you just have to put in during the weekdays and the weekends. And I'd probably add to this by saying what's probably a bit worse than just the total number of brute hours you need to put in is just the unpredictability of the job. You just don't really know 100% if you're enjoying your time with some friends on a Saturday and then all of a sudden you get an email and you have to go into the office or you have to bust out your laptop while everyone else is eating during dinner and you're just working on your computer uh, trying to send something out. You know, there's like a ton of images like that on uh, Instagram and on some of these like banker type um, Instagram accounts, which are pretty funny. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something that's really true. You just have to carry your laptop around whenever you're traveling, always respond to emails within one to two hours at max. If it's anything later than usually than 30 minutes, it's kind of considered late. And so, yeah, you're just kind of always on call and it's a lot to kind of deal with um, throughout all your time. You do get better at managing all that time, uh, managing your time, but it is a lot to deal with. The second con, which can actually be a pro depending on what you're looking for, is that you actually don't have a lot of skin in the game when it comes to all the deals you work on. Because whenever you work on a transaction, it gets announced and then you don't really care that much afterwards except for the client relationship. And so you do want to make sure that each of the transactions you work on is good for the client. But compared to something like an operational role where you're actually getting your hands dirty and learning how to grow a business or something like private equity or hedge funds where you're actually investing real capital and trying to grow that capital and make a good return for your investors, right? That's a lot more skin in the game versus investment banking where despite having investment in the investment banking kind of title, there's no investing that actually goes on. And so, yeah, there's not that much skin in the game. And I think a lot of bankers who are in the industry for a few years to a few decades kind of want to have more invested in what they're working on. The last con is that I would say the work gets pretty repetitive. And that's because a lot of different types of deals in investment banking are pretty kind of process oriented. And so M&A deals, IPOs, all of them kind of follow the same process. And so after a while, especially if you're in it for a few years and you're working you know, 80 to 100 hours a week as an analyst, then you pretty much know how each deal kind of works. And it's nice because as time goes on, you're able to get better at what you're doing. And also as the associate VP and director level, your responsibilities do change. But the overall thing you're working on each 
day in and day out kind of remains the same. And so if you want something a little bit more different, then banking is probably not the best fit for you. All right, so that concludes the video. I hope you all found it helpful. Wanted to give a shout out again to Jackfruit if you're interested in recruiting for any field and want some help in organizing your process. And also check out rareliquidcareers.com if you want to find any other, any of the investment banking guides that I've created. And it would also really help support the channel if you purchase anything. And with that said, I really appreciate you guys watching. Hope to catch you all in the next video. Thanks so much and peace out. Uh -huh.